Everyone talks about the new frameworks to learn, the interviews to crack, and the titles to chase. But very few talk about the lessons that actually shape your career. You know, the kind that books or articles don't teach you. Ones that only come with time and experience. These are the lessons that very few teach, but they're also the lessons that everyone must learn. So in this video, let me talk about 15 of those lessons that I have learned over the past 15 plus years in software engineering. Hey folks, my name is Utsav, a software engineer based in Seattle with over 15 years of experience in big tech and startups. My goal here is to provide you mentorship to help you excel in your software engineering career. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing and connect with me on Instagram, LinkedIn, or any other social media platform where I'll be happy to answer your questions directly. Let's start with lesson number one. Chasing perfection creates more failure than progress ever will. Perfection keeps you stuck. Progress moves you forward. In the software world, perfection is an illusion. Every framework, every product version, every API you love will eventually get deprecated or will be rewritten. We launch MVPs for a reason, because iteration always wins. While you're polishing, someone else is shipping, learning, and improving. Chasing perfection delays momentum. So focus on the realistic 10% instead of the impossible 100%. Then iterate. That's where real growth compounds. Reinvention is survival. Who you were at 25 will not carry you at 40. Tech evolves fast. In the 2000s, monoliths were built on top of Java or .NET or Lambda stack. Then came mobile first, cloud first, and service-oriented distributed architecture. Today, it's all AI-first development and platform thinking. The tools you mastered a decade ago might now be a liability. But that does not mean that you have to be a liability as well. Staying relevant means shedding old skin. Reinvention isn't about giving up. It's about staying in the game. The one thing that should always be an integral part of your game plan is welcoming change and adapting to it. I'll figure it out is powerful, but I will ask for help is wiser. Yes, self-reliance is valuable, but knowing when to ask for help is almost always smarter. 10-minute question can save days of spinning your wheels. Experienced engineers don't have all the answers, but they just know how to unblock themselves faster. So don't hoard problems. Solve them faster together. The world doesn't care about your excuses, but it listens to your results. Everyone hits blockers. Unclear specs, slow teammates, messy handoffs, but none of those are metrics. The scoreboard only tracks outcomes. As unfair as it sounds, you rarely get rewarded for effort. You get rewarded for delivery. Therefore, shift your mindset from why I couldn't to how I will. That's what moves the needle. Be the person who provides solution, not the one who points out the problems. What gets measured gets improved. In software engineering, observability is king. Use metrics and data to improve performance, usability, and adoption. Improve based on feedback, then validate against your pre metrics. Repeat. But that does not need to stay limited to software engineering. Apply the same logic to your own growth. Track what matters, your time, your habit, your outputs. Even a weekly reflection log can help uncover patterns and areas of friction. Remember, you cannot optimize what you don't observe. Technical debt is inevitable, but just don't ignore the interest. Shipping fast is often necessary, but shortcuts aren't free. They come with debt. Every hard-coded hack, every undocumented module, every skipped test case, those are loans and interest accrues. They must be paid at some point, but the longer you wait, the higher the interest rises. Smart teams manage debt like finance. They take it deliberately, track it visibly, and pay it down early. The best software engineers are also great storytellers. Coding is all about logic, but humans aren't just that. We have emotions, we have biases. Being a great software engineer isn't just about solving problems, it's about helping others understand why your solution matters. Whether it's a design review or a pitch to leadership, framing your ideas with clarity and purpose turns complexity into impact. You cannot hustle your way out of bad health. Your body keeps score. Burning the candle at both ends might impress in the short term, but over time, it will break you down. Sleep is a strategy. 
exercise is an edge, eating well is insurance. As software engineers, we solve problems with our minds. So take care of the machine that runs them because health and vitality are a one-way path. Once they're gone, you don't get them back. The short-term gains for which you sacrifice them are almost never worth it on the long run. Time doesn't care about your priorities, but it moves fast anyway. Just like your health, time does not wait for anybody. I know that there's always one more task, one more sprint, or one more launch, but life doesn't queue politely behind your roadmaps. Your job will wait. Even your career can wait. But your family, your parents, significant other, children, pets, friends, they cannot. So don't miss out on what you cannot get back. Don't just work for the paycheck. Work for your curiosity and your passion. The best engineers don't only learn for promotions, they learn for the fun of it. A side project, a new hobby, or a different domain you're exploring. Those are often the things that lead to your most significant breakthroughs. If something fascinates you, don't let mundane tasks get in the way. Manage your time deliberately to allow your passions to fit in. For example, if you're fascinated by hacking or want to explore cybersecurity, try HackMe. Today's video sponsor is a great place to do so. Try HackMe is the world's largest hands-on cybersecurity training platform with over 5 million users globally. On Try HackMe, anyone can learn cybersecurity, no matter their experience level. Users can learn how to ethically hack machines and investigate real-world attacks, covering both offensive and defensive cyber attacks. It's gamified, hands-on technical training where users hack real machines directly in the browser, making cybersecurity education fun, accessible, and immersive. So whether you're into red teaming, blue teaming, or just curious and starting out, there's a complete training path for you. And the labs are built like real attacks. You're actually doing the work, not just reading. And the best part, it's built to take you from zero to job ready with guided learning paths and a full careers hub. If that sounds interesting, visit the link in the description below to get 25% off their annual plan. Thanks to TryHackMe for sponsoring this video. Titles are rented, but skills are owned. Don't get too attached to your title. It's just a label, not a guarantee. You may be a principal engineer at a large company, but not have much responsibility, or just be a software engineer at a startup and own the entire product. What you do matters more than how you're labeled. So focus on that. Your ability to lead a project, mentor a peer, debug a nasty issue, or architect a clean solution. That's what makes you valuable everywhere. Your most valuable skills aren't tangible. You don't own your reputation. You can't buy trust. These traits aren't metrics that can be tracked or scored. But people will remember how you show up, not just what you ship. Your energy, reliability, generosity. These are the attributes that make you someone others want to work with, learn from, and refer to. And these compound faster than any technical skills you have. Comfort is the enemy of progress. If your job is easy, it might be time to level up. Growth comes from the discomfort of leading when you're unsure, learning when you feel slow, and speaking up when it's awkward. Doing difficult things can become as much as of a habit as laziness can. So be deliberate about choosing to undertake the harder task, take the unknown path, and thrive in ambiguity. You don't grow from repetition, you grow from resistance. So find it and lean into it. Every software engineer is a product. Learn how to position yourself. As a software engineer, you'll create many products throughout your career. But what you may not realize is that you are a product too. You might have the skills, but how do people perceive you? Your resume, your portfolio, your contributions, they're your landing page. Your mentors, your managers, and your peers, they're your supporters. You don't need to be a self-promoter, However, you do need to be strategic about how you present yourself. So shape your narrative before someone else writes it for you. You are not late, you're exactly where you need to be. Tech moves fast, and that speed can make you feel like you're always behind. But take a step back and think, behind what? Behind who? Everyone's path is different. Some start at 18, others start at 38. Some pivot into tech from medicine, teaching, or art. Others move out of tech into something else. So focus on building your skills, your mindset, and your momentum. Don't worry about how you compare to everyone else. If you have the consistency, discipline, and resilience, the timing will take care of itself. And that's it. That's 15 lessons from 15 plus years in software engineering. 
If even one of these landed with you, do me a favor and please like the video and drop your own lesson in the comments and share this with someone who's navigating their own software engineering journey. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.